What's going on my friends? Welcome back to another Brood War Ladder Battle. This time we've got Stork in the bottom right hand corner. Soma in the top left. Feels like all the casts recently have been kind of leading up to this moment. There's a lot of hype around this guy right now in hopes that he's going to be coming back to the SSL soon. Feels like we've got a Zerg sized hole in our hearts right now with Soma out of the picture, but he'll be back and meanwhile with Soma outside in the military, we've got Stork just dominating in KCM. He's been putting up so many great games. He's been obviously practicing his butt off. Look at this 570 APM. Could you imagine? Stork having 570 APM just a year ago. This guy was feeling so lackluster. He was feeling so washed just in 2023. Like sitting always around 250, 200 APM, not really trying hard, but still playing at a high level, able to get into the ASL almost every season. But now he is back with a vengeance. Look at him, the rebirth. Stork blazing at 470 APM. Of course, it won't stay that high for the entirety of the game, but I've been paying attention to the games of Stork I've watched, and he's been staying pretty high up there, like around 300 APM, 350 APM every single game. And you can just really tell that he's been practicing a lot. He's been honing his skills and I'm really excited to see how he matches up how he stacks up against Soma we're here on Radeon a very standard map cross map so the gateway opener is not going to be able to put on much pressure aside from that you know, Soma already opened with a uh, over pool he shouldn't be taking too much pressure. You can put on some pressure of his own, but you need to keep these lings alive. If you, they don't end up getting inside the main base, you need to keep them alive because there's going to be pressure coming out of Stork soon, and every additional ling that you're forced to build will hurt you in the long term. Two zealots now out. We should have a forge or perhaps a cybernetic score in this wall if he feels like he can get away with it. Gonna wait for one more Zealot here, it seems. And no rush right now for Stork. He's just focusing on his build, getting all his probes out. Trying to keep this probe alive. The scouting probe doing its job. I'm very curious what kind of build we're gonna see here out of Soma. He's doing a good job of denying that scout. And he's got speed on the way before layer. Okay, we may end up seeing four hatch hydra. Or perhaps it's just going to be that three hatch hydra into a macro play. He's been pretty fond of that, especially against this mo uh, against Bisu in the most recent series we watched. I'll put a link at the end of the video so you guys can check that out if you haven't seen it, but he really favored this style against Bisu. And you can see why as time goes on, he's going to have a huge amount of drones. He's going to be able to macro really, really hard. And he's very good at keeping his overlords alive, even just with pure Hydra. Generally keeping the majority of the overlords alive. Nice block there on the ramp, utilizing a drone popping out from that main base to just get ahead of that probe. Prevent the scout is super big because there could be... A spire going up in the main right now, and we have to take that into account here. As Stork, Stork's gonna send his zealots back home. We'll get them back here in time. Two zealots in the wall, so the Ling run by can't happen. But I don't think we're looking for Ling, Ling run by. There it is, the fourth hatch. This is what I like to see. Fourth hatch, Hydra Den. Gonna put a fifth hatch and then a gas. I'll just predict his build here. We're gonna see a lot of hydras this game, guys. A lot, a lot of hydras, but no hydras breaking down this door just yet. 
He's focusing mostly on droning up and getting out his hatcheries so that he can hit a very big timing. Get up to that 35 drone number as quickly as possible. And then get ready to defend these uh, Corsairs and eventually the Zealot timing, of course, that's going to come out. So typical, so standard for Protoss players in the current meta. This is the same type of play that I face every day on the ladder, guys. Just a Corsair coming out right around six minutes, checking to see if it can harass anything, but it'll see that there's nothing really here to harass, and Soma is just powering away, getting his evolution chamber going. He'll be getting that upgrade here soon. He won't be able to deny the plus one, which is mostly what he was going for against Bisu. He was really trying to hit that wall with about five uh, hydras uh, and range and then go into a macro play after that but this is much more of a traditional five hatch hydra i'm surprised he hasn't taken this gas yet you actually need that gas uh pretty important to get that going here soon but he did continuously mine off of his natural uh the whole time rather than uh, pulling off drones uh, as some players will so he's got a, a bit of a bank of gas but he does really need that second gas otherwise you just won't be able to produce the mass hydra once you have three two gases you can produce uh, non-stop hydras off of two uh, off of six hatcheries excuse me and then once you have three gases then you can afford to add lurkers into that mix as well because you'll just have the little bit of extra supplement of gas but Good snipes here. Very good snipes here by Soma. Picking off two Zealots already with just these few Lings. Really, really nice moves there. Now the Zealot at timing is looking a lot less scary. In fact, just seven Zealots coming up right now. To the, what do we have here? 12 Hydras with speed that are available to fight this. Blanking with the Lings. Going to push this back. Focusing down some Zealots here at the back. Looks like he might get one or two. Forcing everything back. He only gets one Zealot though. One kill on this Corsair. None on these other two. So that was just the one Overlord that went down over here on the right hand side. We don't have Overlord speed just yet. But there it is. It finishes. Now he could potentially put pressure onto the Protoss player. You can head over. Try to kill this wall. Storm is just about done though. And so it may be a little bit late for that. Killing off his own eggs here. That's the sounds that we hear out on the map. DT. Center left. Pretty good overlord coverage though. It'll be hard to get into this natural with the amount of hydras wandering around and the number of overlords that are well positioned to deny any sort of DT run by. The Zealots are going to come out and run interference. Oh boy. Stork really not paying attention to these Zealots. He loses three Zealots for free. Super painful there for Stork. I was hoping to, you know, pull Soma out of position with those, but ends up just throwing them to the wayside. There's really nothing they can do at this point. Some... Hydra's moving out and he's trying to trap these zealots down in the bottom left hand corner Good micro here. Just pulling everything back Does lose a couple of hydras, but he's almost cleaned up these zealots DT will slip by right behind This big group of hydras one hydra was left at home To fend off these corsairs a little bit of a mistake here. I should say from soma not really respecting the Corsair threat. He ends up losing, I think, three Overlords there. Was it? No, he only lost one. Only lost one Overlord. Good split there, just sending the Overlords around the map. Bringing one back to defend. Now with four Hydras here, he should be fine. Dark Archon has been prepared by Stork. He's expecting a Mutalus switch. Since he saw the, the, the layer go down, it's a... A possibility, but it's not going to happen in this game. We've got some Scourge coming out, and Lurker Aspect is on the way. There's the DT being followed by an Overlord. 
just hanging out over his shoulder, tracking him right now. There's some Scourge connecting as well, picking off some of these Corsairs. That actually might make Stork a bit nervous, losing some of these Corsairs at this point. He will start a cannon in his nat or his main mineral, mineral line. Of course, the Dark Archon is great against Mutas, but it's not a catch-all. It can't save you in every situation. So having those extra cannons makes him feel a little bit comfier, a little cozier here, but it's just buying more time. It's costing Stork more money and it's reducing his army size by little bits here and there, whereas Soma is just fully committing, fully committing into making Hydras. He's got so many Hydras on the map right now. You can't even control this many with all of your hotkeys, it's just too many to keep them uh, all on separate hotkeys. So you actually need to set up an attack where you've got all your hydras sitting right here, and then the ones that are on hotkeys sitting in another location, and then you box select send everything in, and then you use your hotkeys to send the rest of the army. And that's how you can practically engage with an army of this size. A lot of lurkers are being made now. A fourth base in the top right hand corner but sharking around here at the entrance of Stork's base looking for any openings that he might find uh, to possibly punish Stork trying to take this third got to be very careful though the Dark Archon is still incredibly useful when it comes to locking down a whole bunch of Hydras or even incoming lurkers and then storming them to death Soma going to try and drive a wedge in between these two bases. He's found a location with no storm. And just a whole bunch of zealots sitting there at the natural. Oh my gosh. Can he actually get all the probes here? And he gets a good chunk of those probes. Manages to kill them off. That was a great maelstrom there. Can he follow it up with the storm? Diving forward on top of some of these Templar. But most of the Templars stay al alive. And... This has not gone super well for Soma. Soma getting rejected here at the third as well. Totally rebuffed and he lost all of his lurkers. It's a pretty decent trade here for Stork. Frankly, quite impressive. He was holding his uh, storms pretty close to the chest. He didn't throw them out willy-nilly and he's got another Maelstrom here in a second. Will he end up throwing it down? There it is. Maelstrom on some of these Hydras. Quite a few of the Dragoons go down. But the Hydras are falling en masse. Those Lurker eggs get picked off as well. A DT heading up towards top right. There's three Hydras to defend. That should be enough. But let's see if he can make it make a run by. These things are quite tanky. He's just going to run for it. Does Soma notice? He does. All right, he picks up on that DT, making its way into this base, and he will be able to pick it off without losing too much. One drone is the cost, but he's happy to pay it. Now, where do you set up here as some? I guess you can set up like this area. Lurkers. You need to defend both of these spots. Maybe defend from high ground here and then defend here. I'm not 100% sure. This is a pretty scary army. We're 30 supply ahead. Or nearly 30. I guess 25 supply ahead. As the Protoss right now. And pushing in towards the natural. There's almost nothing here. Everything is actually over by this third base. And geez. Soma's in quite a bit of trouble right now. The attack into the natural. Or into that uh, space between the natural and the third did not go well for him. Maybe a counterattack is what he needs. It looks like he was thinking about it, but as soon as he sees the army pulling up to his natural, he decides, he changes his mind and brings his army back to try and pincer this. And try and focus down as many Archons as he can. Maybe get this Dark Archon as well. Here's the big flank coming up behind this. He's going to dive right on top of that. Some great Lurker Spines and all of the... Templar have disappeared. It's just pure Dragoon now. Is this an overextension? I think so. Stork making a big mistake trying to push into the natural right now without enough storm to make it work. He loses the bulk of his powerful army in all of those Dragoons. Man, that is a painful, painful loss. Some Zealots are going to make their way over here to the top right-hand corner, but 
two lurkers hold position on the ramp plus two lurkers behind that two two hydras on the ramp excuse me and then two lurkers behind that is going to be enough to deny this zealots are making a run for it soma tries to block that but he's not able to now stork does have a base here on the high ground but i think this game will just go on it was kind of a hard reset there that stork's army just went through however with the fourth base online and a good number of probes to mine that he can definitely reproduce whatever he wants at this point. He can just go super late game. He can go right into Reaver. He can just keep producing Templar with that fourth gas coming online. Make a lot of Zealots. He doesn't have to reproduce Dragoons. Seems like he's putting out a few of them though, just to fill out his army. I don't think we're ever going to see again though, the really huge Dragoon army that we saw die at the natural those days are over it's now time the time of the uh <laughs> the time of the defiler is here guys sorry i was clicking a bunch of different buttons there you saw the mini map i was um accidentally pressed tab trying to remember which button brings up the unit tab it's definitely not that one getting some great storms on the high ground there but Soma's coming around the back with a lot of lurkers. Is this a mistake, though? Oh, Stork left the game. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, dude. He really just left the game like that? Oh, what a shame, Stork. He had four bases. What are we doing? He's just going to let it go? I guess he didn't want to play a huge macro game. Maybe he had to go for dinner. His mom called him. Not too sure about that one, Stork. And I was really looking forward to a super epic game here. I might not even release this one. All right, guys, since that last game felt like a bit of a rug pull, we're going to follow it up with a few more Stork games that I have on the back burner here. We've got Stork versus Solki. With Solki in the top right, Stork in the top left. Every game I'm showing you today was played in September of 2024. So all very recent games. I think this was on the 23rd or 24th. So we should be seeing that updated Stork and getting a look at his PVZ now against the best player. Definitely the best Zerg player in the world right now. Maybe even the best player in the world right now. Solki here. Both players on their normal accounts need money. Pretty clear who that is. K Stork, definitely our buddy Stork. And again, banging away at that keyboard, 520 APM. You can see he's taking things a lot more seriously at this point. Gas. Oh, interesting. So it's actually nine pool. He's going to cancel this, right? He's going to cancel this, right? He starts a, an overlord and then a drone. Well, that is interesting. I guess we're going to go for a link speed here. This is not what I was expecting out of soul key here on kickback. Although, you know what? A lot of players get pretty greedy on this map. The only thing is Stork is, you know, he's not Nexus first or anything. He's got the gateway here. He's going to have a zealot it out in a moment if he just builds another pylon here and he has two zealots in the wall it's pretty difficult to get through this probe's not going to get in for a little bit of time that's really important here for soul key he may even be able to slip the lings past before the probe gets in so you're going to see this he sees the lings that's huge so immediately he's going to go ahead and send that back home. Second Zealot is about halfway complete. We may want to pull probes. Definitely we're not going to take this Nexus right now. Maybe throw down a Forge. Extra Pylon is the choice. Zero drone making its way forward here. Second Zealot pops out perfectly in the wall. He's going to go after the drone. Wait, what? What are we doing here? That's a perfect surround. That's exactly the wrong thing. That is exactly what we don't want to do. But he does kill quite a few of those lings. I guess it was all about 
mining out those mineral patches so maybe uh you know stork's hand was forced in that situation he had to pull the the uh, zealots to stop the mineral from going down it's kind of an interesting play here from from uh, soul key right knowing that this is going to be a full wall he just immediately pulls a drone and goes for the mineral patch to let these in and stork may not be able to recover from here he's still got double the workers over his zerg opponent but he's i mean i don't know guys there's two pylons here it's not like he can easily unpower this if he gets the cannon up i think there's a good chance that stork can hold will he allow that to happen thinking about going in on that but good pulling there from stork they deal a little damage to this gateway. Zealots are getting a little low. Targeting down another probe here and there. Forcing them back. There's three Zealots now. Three Zealots can definitely take this fight. More reinforcements arriving, especially with four probes. 14 probes still. And still only seven workers here for Soul Key. Hitting that gateway. Not the biggest deal in the world. I think it's better to just... Build a cannon. Yeah, start the cannon. Oh, he can't forces to cancel or he actually kills the cannon there. That is super annoying. Filling that cannon right as it starts to warp in. Now he's going to hit the gateway from either side. Taxing the multitasking of Stork right now. Stork desperately trying to hold on to this gateway. He needs this gateway to stay alive. One zealot out here is going to get trapped. That does go down. Do we have another zealot? It does pop out here. Perfect timing for that zealot to come out. Right as things were starting to go wrong there. A Ling gets killed by the cannon. There's only two more on the inside. So he should be able to start a cannon now. He should be able to get a cannon going. He's having a hard time keeping this gateway alive. These two a Ling's going to work on the gateway from the left hand side. And of course the zealots back. Forcing the split. 40 HP on that gateway. It's crazy. One more zealot. Can it get out? Oh, that last zealot almost made its way out, but it was just barely not in time. Another gateway going to finish up, though. In fact, two gateways are on the way. Two hatcheries on the way here for Soul Key. Who's just going to be macroing out behind this. Really a shame that that last zealot didn't finish here for Stork, but he will have another popping out here in just a moment and Solki can't keep making lings and drone at the same time here he's gonna have to switch to droning eventually and it looks like he will be switching now he's got about 11 lings over here he supply blocks brutally stork at this point 26 out of 25 starting to get some drones going these 11 lings are gonna hold off for a little bit longer but two more zealots are going to pop out soon. And maybe Stork can put on some counter pressure. Hasn't really started these yet. He gets the assimilator going at least. Drones are starting to catch up to probes now. And we might just totally stabilize into a normal game. It's quite interesting. That's a pretty cool play from Sulky to go ahead and grab that minifield. I guess you have to do two drones. That's why there was two drones there. So if you can just kill one of those two drones, then you can completely deny that play, but he managed to get those minerals from each of those two drones and break his way here into the main. He wasn't able to finish the game, but let's see if he can macro out of this position and still be okay. The layer is on the way. Cybernetic score is not quite done yet. Moving forward with three probes and a good chunk of zealots. You should be able to force more lings now. Actually, sunkins are going to be started. Try and deal with this uh, push out from Stork. Stork may be able to get a natural online now. He's a little bit behind with the number of bases here. Only having one base versus three. That's not a good situation. Sunken is done. Is this enough zealots to take this out? More lings are being produced. Another sunken could start here in a moment. It's a pretty good position on these lings as well. 
Yeah, I don't think he can take this. Eight zealots are heading in. He's going to try and run by. Looks like the lings are going to block that. Probes in the mix, dealing quite a bit of damage here, helping out a lot with these zealots pushing their way through the, through the uh, lings. And wow, he will be able to get by this. So he can actually go onto the high ground now and potentially block this ramp with just a few zealots. Okay, targeting down some drones. A few of them are going to go down. The zealots are getting very low, though. There's only two remaining. Looks like Soul Key clears this. And the next two zealots will head back home. Is this a GG? Are we out of the game now? So Stork. I mean, he did a pretty good job of holding off that attack. He had some desperate situations going on with that gateway. He almost died several times, but just barely managed to cling to life. Is he going to fall now? After that failed zealot counterattack. Ling slipping by over here just to check out this natural sea, how far along that is. And he is going to be very happy to see it's not far along at all. It hasn't even been started yet. So a Corsair getting in over here. We'll be able to potentially kill a Overlord. But with now Mutas being pumped off of three gas, there's really no way to win the air battle anymore. Sork is going to lose this fight. They may even lose his Corsair. Oh, so close. Hot on the tail there. So Mutas will get the moving shot potentially, and they can finish that off. There we go. He does finish that. Mutas coming forward. One base Protoss versus three base Muta. I think Stork is just about done here. A very clever play from Soul Key. I expect nothing less. This is a great finisher as well. To just go sunken with the Muta follow-up. Get overwhelming numbers of Scourge and Muta and just, oh, just take down the main base and natural. You can easily just keep producing Mutas at this point. Four more on the way. More pairs of Scourge coming up. The Nexus has to finish and there's only two Corsairs to defend this. Plus one's not done and plus one armor is on the way for Stork. Or for, for Soul Key, excuse me. The muted number is getting a little bit high at this point. And the probe count is pretty low. 26 drones to 25 probes. It is coming in. Picking off a dragoon. Dragoons can fight, but they're not that great against these mutas. They only deal about half damage. 10 damage per shot. To these air units. Oh, gonna go ahead and connect on some of these. And there it is. GG Stork taps out. Soul Key takes this victory away. Kind of a crazy, wacky game with that uh, intense play there from Soul Key to eat up those minerals and break in through the wall. Very quick one here. We didn't really get to see Stork's plan at all for kickback. We can see that sulky has got a few tricks up his sleeve when it comes to this map. And maybe we'll see some of those displayed uh, this season in the SSL. Now jumping into our last game, Sock versus Stork. Let's go check it out. All right. Stork is not having too much of a good time on ladder right now. Being beaten by both Zerg opponents today and... Now he's going to be going up against someone maybe a little bit more beatable. Sock here in the top left-hand corner on Minstrel. And honestly, Stork's Protoss versus Terran has always been a little better. He's always struggled with PvZ. But it's improved a lot more recently, his PvT as well. Really, both both matchups have just gotten so, so much better. His, his improvement is the contrast between how he was playing at the beginning of this year. And now here we are in you know, the fourth quarter. 
or nearing the fourth quarter of 2024 it's uh it's kind of shocking but in this matchup specifically stork likes to now uh, play a bit more of a meta style he's still completely capable of playing uh carriers he's still completely capable of going arbiter but he does tend to rely on the more uh, finesse requiring i guess you could say the the the, re the requisite finesse of doing something like a, a reaver into two robo style shuttle dropping zealots on top of stuff and breaking it open it 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 does require something special and it seems like stork has ironed out the kinks in that game he's able to bust open positions that very few protoss players can and he's just playing that style with a lot more confidence it seemed like before he just didn't even want to try that style or wasn't even willing to pull it out because he wasn't quite confident with it he played a very unorthodox style of protoss now he's leaning much harder into the orthodox style and sprinkling in his unorthodox pvt here and there which I feel like is a, a much better recipe for success. And so what kind of style are we going to see here from Stork? Appears like he's going to be reliant on Dragoons in this early game and probably get into a fairly quick Nexus. You can see we're at 22 supply. Like a 23 Nexus is a pretty darn quick Nexus gonna give you a very nice economy and with the uh, dragoons incrementing out and range finishing up soon he should be fairly robust against anything that sock decides to throw at him here pretty good blocking so far on this scv can he prevent it from getting up into the main ah uh, just barely not quite and so this scv gets the full scout here in the main base he knows that there's range on the way he knows it's a one gate goon play back at home he will react appropriately you don't even actually need this bunker right now unfortunately sock didn't like leave it at 99 percent or something like that a lot of players will do that uh, he's gonna need it here in a little bit but it is kind of early to have that bunker there in the front no vulture oh wait there's the vulture over here so he did go vulture before machine shop which means the tank is going to be a little slower so i guess oh wow okay that's where he cut i see he built only one marine here so rather than you know build three marines okay he's going to build the three marines a little bit later usually you'll have the three marines out already um instead of building those uh, immediately he's going to skip marine production get the bunker out a little bit sooner and cut the fat off the trim the fat off of this build in that way by just getting the marines later now he even cancels the third marine so he only gets two marines here and he should be very safe going on into this early mid game doesn't have the scout any longer and he's sent his vulture all the way back home now that's going to be repaired up and has no pressure on his natural will stork try to take a quick third base it appears that he wants to go that route has two gateways finishing up and he's about to grab a third nexus at about six minutes it's quite a quick nexus but I'm not sure that so Sock has really any punish here. He's only got one factory. Three siege tanks. And a single vulture out on the map. He's going to be setting up turrets here. Knowing that he hasn't been able to scout his opponent for some time. There could be a shuttle on the way. But that's not the case. Just observers and dragoons being pumped by Stork. It means that these turrets are somewhat useless at this moment. 
and they'll just only they'll only serve to slow down Sock's build and help Stork to get a little bit further ahead. Now, the worker count is still very even. And since we're working with one production facility each, it's going to remain that way for a good amount of time. Our observer flies in and sees more factories being added. It would be crazy if there weren't factories coming down right now. But he sees the fact that there is only one factory and that should help uh, Stork to breathe a sigh of relief. Like, okay, we're not going to get attacked right away. You're just on one factory uh, with more coming online. We should be safe here uh, with the third base coming up. And indeed, he will be putting down a couple more pylons here. Getting these workers to mine. It's about time to start the gateway explosion, I think. Whereas Sock sitting here, adding on his third factory. I'm surprised we're not going up to at least five factories. This is a pretty difficult map to take a third base on. Trying to come down here and take this means you've got one, two, three areas plus this area to defend. Those are all potential attack routes that the Protoss can take. Unless you want to take this space, which in that case, you need to cover this area and this area, plus the back of your mineral patches, which can be a real nightmare. A reaver on the way. The shuttle's already out. We've got mines finally coming up. Gravitic drive on the way as well. Speed for that shuttle is going to be kicking in here in a moment. Let's see what kind of damage Stork can get done here with this little drop that's heading across the map. By the way, guys, I just wanted to let you know that I am going to be heading to Korea next month and uh, watching the SSL in person. The round of four is what I've decided to go and uh, stop by for. Uh, if any of you guys are planning to go to Korea around that same time, let me know. I'll just be there for the few days that it takes to watch that uh, series. Those two different series, the round of four. And uh, then I'll be back to Japan. So hit me up. If any of you guys are going to be there, let me know. I'm going to make an announcement about it on the channel here soon as well. But it should be fun. It should be a great time. There's a tournament coming up for Neon Marble Rust as well. That's going to be uh, probably like 12 hours after this video comes out. And I'll be casting that as well. Well, I'll, I'll be casting that. I, I won't be casting the SSL. Um, so the no, really no reason to say as well. But I will be casting uh, that Neon Marble Rust tournament. Quite a bit of money on the line for that. I did put out some announcements about it, but hardly anybody signed up. And so I think pretty much everybody who did join up is likely to take home a prize, at least some amount of cash, which is pretty sweet. Looks like no damage so far with these Reavers. A drop flying around for Sock as well. Looks like that's going to be spotted. Ooh, good drop here to just catch these probes on the transfer. You rarely ever see that move specifically, but uh, that worked out pretty good. He got a few probes there. Unfortunately, now that that's been revealed, though, he's not going to be able to find much more damage. Two Stargates on the way. A third Stargate coming up. He's going to be switching into Carrier. I expect nothing less from Stork. Let's see how this carrier game goes. I was actually hoping for more of a... No scans in that main base just yet. I was hoping for more of a um, robo-based game, but hey, we'll take what we can get. We'll see what happens with this uh, carrier game. I feel like if, if Stork gets to six carriers, he should be able to just win this game. If he gets the six carriers, it's going to be so hard to move. There we go. He scans it. He sees it. Sock has spotted the carriers. And so 
he needs to do some sort of attack here he needs to just pull the trigger i think we need eight factories we've got three four five six just drop seven and eight and put everything together and just go for an attack there's really uh, no reason to wait here no real reason at all we have ooh scarab damage is coming up as well it's going to continue to produce reavers while going into these carriers and the reavers can be a great stop gap to slow down the terran push see how well these are controlled though it all comes down to uh, the way that these are controlled how much time it ends up getting purchased here by storks reaver control now army's gonna move around the side and we have a turret coming up over here it seems like storks maybe not aware of that i thought he would have seen this with the observer over here but wait a minute He's moving around the bottom the bottom side and oh gonna get right over here towards the natural already stork is like <laughs> he's sitting here with his whole army i don't think he knows guys i really don't think he knows and here comes the the army of sock gonna completely blindside stork now there's quite a few goliaths here there's not that many though We've got seven goliaths so maybe if he keeps the reavers over here oh he's gonna counter he's gonna pull the probes and counter going over here towards the third base and i'm eating a lot of mine damage there unfortunately but the uh gateway army will come in and get rid of this cc command center down at the bottom left should be forced to cancel as well probes need to be pulled into the main here soon a lot of cannons being built on high ground on this side that's kind of funny maybe we can bring the reavers up to try and deal with that i guess a reaver went down I guess maybe coming trying to come from behind with that oh it's gonna lose the reaver oh man that shuttle going down really hurts counter attacking into the natural is real uh scary move here but high ground tanks should be able to deal with that not too without too much difficulty that's a lot of cannons holy cow what a consummate ladder player he's blocking more goliaths from coming up and he does have carriers that i think right where are the carriers okay there they are wow he's got five carriers and he didn't even lose the natural wow okay i think stork's gonna win this game now five carriers he still has the natural he's only lost one base tank goes down to some cannons as well sock is kind of falling apart he's sending his army northward he's gonna try and snipe this nexus if he can but even if that goes down we'll still have stork on three bases and three base versus two base absolutely fine if you're going carrier does not matter he's gonna be totally happy with this situation he's just gonna dive right on top of this may end up losing a carrier he's trying to come over to save the probes all right he will lose the uh, nexus but the carrier remains and so we've got five carriers with three more on the way two more already coming up to meet this army it is a very scary carrier force that sock really doesn't have an answer for at the moment nexus being remade this next is going to be remade at the same time he's got plenty of money the sock army looking very small hardly any goliaths doesn't even have i think there's more carriers honestly okay there's there's a little bit more a couple more goliaths here than there are carriers but that's going to change very quickly as the uh, goliaths are quickly getting shut down this army moves northward but they really can't go too far uh, unless the carriers just turn around and come track them down i think sock is just moments away from tapping out of this game and there it is gg is called sock leaves and stork proving that he's still completely capable of doing a carrier play like this and it didn't seem like sock had a very good answer honestly this map in particular seems so good for carriers it's kind of scary it's one thing to have like a lot of high grounds 
where the carriers can be microed to, but it's a completely another thing when you have all these different lanes. You have all these different lanes where you can fly over, and then suddenly the things, nothing can chase you, right? Like if they're up here, the army comes up here, and you're hitting with the carriers, if you fly directly south, suddenly the army has to go all the way around here or all the way around here just to catch up to the carriers. So the carriers can create such a big amount of distance between themselves and the ground army. And they could even just fly straight down all the way down and just come down here. Come down along this axis is so difficult to chase. So different, difficult to mirror with the Goliaths to catch up to the carriers. And I think that Sok realized that. He's like, all right, I have to kill now. We cannot allow these carriers to get fully off the ground and operational. But Stork transitioned very smoothly into this carrier attack and popped out a pretty crazy number of carriers for uh, so early in the game. Despite all the damage that was going down, you can see he's already got what 10 carriers out it's 16 minutes in that's a little bit crazy plus he's throwing down two next eye at the same time this man is pretty good with the macro right now 215 apm i saw that his earlier games were more closer to 300 and yeah there's the average apm 329 looking pretty good stork does get a win here at the end of the video guys thank you so much for watching Leave a like if you enjoyed it. A little bit uh, a little of a, a wacky series here. I was expecting more out of that Stork versus Soma game. Uh, feels like a bit of a letdown, but hopefully the rest of these games made up for that. Thank you for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video.